Hey everyone, welcome back to our next video in our series on hyperbolic functions. In this video, we're going to be talking about derivatives of hyperbolic functions. We're going to give you what the derivatives are, a short version of where they come from, and then at the end we will also talk about a way that you might remember them a bit more easily, assuming that you know the derivatives of the regular trig functions. Okay, up in the corner here, I've got my Cosh and my Cinch exponential definitions. We'll use those just a little bit in these videos if we want to figure out the derivative of Cinch of x first. So that is going to be the derivative of, if I use the exponential definition, because I think most of us are probably good with taking the derivative of an exponential if we're already working with hyperbolic function. So I'll do the derivative with respect to x of e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. If you prefer, you can pull the 1 half out. You certainly don't have to do that. But you could say, well, we'll make it 1 half times the derivative of e to the x minus e to the negative x. And if we do the derivative, we'll get 1 half times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x itself. And then the derivative of negative e to the negative x would be itself as well, but the chain rule is going to give us a negative 1 when we do the derivative of the inside. So that's going to change the sign of the outside, chain rule giving us times negative 1. So we'll get this expression, and this might look a bit familiar just because it matches something we have exactly in the top of the screen right now, we have e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. So it turns out that the derivative of cinch x, as you might have expected, is cosh of x. So that's our first one there. Looking here, we have the derivative of cosh x. We'll do a similar thing. So we'll think of that as the derivative of the exponential function to find this one. So we'll do the derivative of e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. I'll again bump out my 1 half. Totally optional, but I'm going to option for that right now. So I can just see plain old simple e to the x plus e to the negative x. A similar thing is going to happen here that happened when we did the last one. We will keep our 1 half. The derivative of the exponential e to the x will be the same. And then the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x, but the chain rule will give us minus e to the negative x. If I put my 2 back on the bottom now, you will notice something that is perhaps close to what we expected, but maybe not exactly what you expected, because this in fact is actually exactly cinch of x. So we notice, remember that the derivative of regular cosine circular function cosine of x is actually negative sine x. Notice a big difference here that the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine of x is exactly cinch of x for this one. Okay, we'll move on to hyperbolic tangent now. Instead of using the exponential definitions for this one, I'm going to actually use something from our intro video that said the way we define hyperbolic tangent is that we actually think of it just like we do with regular tangent. We're going to think of this as cinch of x over cosh of x. So I'm going to do a quotient rule here instead of using the exponential definitions. So remember that the quotient rule will be uh, the low function, which is cosh of x, times the derivative of the high function. We just found the derivative of cinch x, it's cosh x, so I get another cosh x there, minus the high function, which is cinch x, times the derivative of the low function, which is, if we look here, the derivative of cosh is cinch. Okay, so we've got that for our numerator, and then all over the square of the denominator, right? So we will get cosh squared x there. So I get cosh x times cosh x is cosh squared x. I get cinch x times cinch x will give us cinch squared x. So we have cosh squared x minus cinch squared x. And then in the bottom, we keep our cosh squared x. If you look back at our last hyperbolic video, the one working with identities, we actually worked out that cosh squared of x minus cinch squared of x is actually 1. And so this we can think of as 1 over cosh squared x. If you don't believe us, you can check us out in the last video about working with identities. And then since this is 1 over cosh x squared, we could think of this as the reciprocal of cosh squared, also known as hyperbolic secant squared. So we get, as we might have expected with hyperbolic tangent, we get 
hyperbolic secant squared of x for that one. All right, we'll do the hyperbolic cotangent. So again, I'm going to think of this as a derivative, as a quotient, and we will go ahead and do derivative of cosh x over cinch x for this one, and it will work out very much the same way with the quotient rule. So if I do the low function times the derivative of the high function, which would be cinch, so we get two copies there, minus the high function, so I get a cosh x there, times the derivative of the low function, which gives me another cosh x there, all over the square of what lies below gives us cinch squared x on the bottom. And so in this one, I get something a little bit different. I get cinch squared x minus cosh squared x, all over cinch squared x. Okay, if you remember from the derivative of tangent that we just did, we had that cosh squared of x minus cinch squared of x was equal to 1. If you'll notice here, we have the same terms, but each term is the opposite sign of this one. So if cosh squared x minus cinch squared x is 1, then cinch squared x minus cosh squared x is actually negative. So we get negative 1 over cinch squared x. And this is like saying negative reciprocal of cinch is hyperbolic cosecant, if we recall. So this would be actually negative hyperbolic cosecant of x squared, similar to the circular function. Looking at the derivative of hyperbolic secant, we'll do a quotient rule here, thinking of hyperbolic secant as 1 over cosh of x. And if we do that and use the quotient rule, get the low function times the derivative of the high function, derivative of 1 is 0, minus the high function times the derivative of the low function, derivative of cosh x is cinch x, all over the square of what's on the bottom, which will give us cosh squared x. Looking here, the first term, cosh x times 0 is nothing. I get negative 1 times cinch x, so I get negative cinch x on the top. And then on the bottom we have cosh squared x. So to sort of break this apart into its pieces, to see it a little bit more nicely, I'm going to go ahead and break up each piece of the cosh squared x. I'm going to say that's 1 over cosh x. So there's one of my copies of cosh. And then the next part would need to say cinch of x on top over cosh of x. So what I've done is I've just broken out one copy of my cosh x on the bottom. If we go ahead and look at what we have now, we have negative reciprocal of cosh x is going to give us hyperbolic secant of x, and then cinch x over cosh x, we might recognize that as tanch x or hyperbolic tangent of x. Very similar to what we get with regular secant x derivative, but slightly different. We're off by a sign. For cosecant, we'll do a similar thing. So we're going to think of this as the derivative of 1 over cinch x. Quotient rule here gives us the low function, cinch x, times the derivative of the high function, which would be 0, minus high function times the derivative of the low function. Derivative of cinch x would be cosh x, all over the low function squared, so over cinch squared x. First term is nothing, negative cosh x is what's left on top, over cinch squared of x below, and then we'll do a similar thing here. I will break out one of my copies of cinch, so I will say 1 over cinch x there, times I need my cosh x over the other cinch x that I have. So I've just simply rewritten this fraction as two terms. And then you can see we have negative reciprocal of cinch would be hyperbolic cosecant. And we have cosh x over cinch x, and that's going to give us hyperbolic cotangent. Here we have side by side a list of the circular derivatives and the hyperbolic derivatives for these functions. You'll notice that some of these 
match up exactly. For example, the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of sinh is cosh. You'll notice the derivative of tangent is secant squared of the same thing. Derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant squared of the same thing. You'll see that the cotangent definition matches up exactly and you'll see that the cosecant and hyperbolic cosecant definitions pair up nicely as well. The only two that are different, you'll notice we have the derivative of cosine being negative sine, but the derivative of cosh being positive sinh. You'll also probably notice that we have the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the derivative of hyperbolic secant is negative hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tangent. So if you know the list of circular derivatives, you almost know the list of the hyperbolic derivatives. These two, you'll notice, are off by just a negative sign. These two are based solely on hyperbolic cosine and not at all on hyperbolic sine. I'll go down the list and explain what I mean by that. This is the derivative of sinh. It does not have cosh anywhere in it, so it is not based only on cosh. It is the same as the other one. This is hyperbolic tangent. It is based on both cosh and sinh, so it is not based just on cosh. It is the same as the circular functions. This is hyperbolic cotangent. It is based on cosh and sinh. It is not based just on cosh. This one is the same as the circular functions. This is hyperbolic cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sinh. It is not based on cosh. This one is the same. These two are off by a negative. This one is based only on cosh. There is no sinh in this function, so its derivative is the opposite sign. If you look at the other one that's different, this is hyperbolic secant, which is only based on hyperbolic cosine. This is 1 over cosh x, so its formula for its derivative is also off by a negative. That's our short way of remembering what's different between hopefully the ones you already know and the ones you may be needing to know in the near future. All right, good luck with your hyperbolic functions. We'll see you in the next video.